your foot. Hey, Ivan, how's it going? Hi, hi. Very good. How are you? Yes. So first of all, I want to mention again, thank you so much. We chatted because I noticed that uh, you added Ring Central to the Flux adopters page, as well as I think to the Flagger adopters page too, right? Which is yeah, why right. we're talking about Flux and Flagger. And I said, oh, thank you so much. It's so great. It's really, really great to see, um, you know, every week more and more companies adding them. Selves, uh, and we've been chatting with many people in the community as well, and that's what's culminated in all these really fantastic stories. So just think about like there are many, many more to come. So many different use cases, so many different needs, so many different industries, um, and so it's really exciting to hear how people are getting creative with Flux and depending on it and finding it very useful. And so, Yvonne, I really appreciate your taking the time to chat with us and to join us today um, at GitOps Days. Um, Thank you. Yes. So uh, let's get started. Yeah, you um, are very, very passionate um, about GitOps, about Kubernetes, about Flux. Um, we had a great conversation. So yeah, tell us about um, the, I guess, the bigger picture. Yeah, your, your journey uh, with Kubernetes. Yeah, so we started our journey. So first of all, I want to thank everyone who uh, participates in this conference. It was great talks all day. I watched every talk for you and yesterday. Uh, and I will watch every talk today, um, thanks to YouTube. I can record, I can pause, I can I can get back to it. So I recommend to everyone to do it. It's fantastic. It's, it's so fun, so useful, so informative. And um, yeah, so Ring Central. So first of all, I work in Ring Central as director of engineering, but I worked in Ring Central and other companies as different roles, as a software architect, as a team lead, as a software engineer. And uh, as for Ring Central, I just quick overview of what Ring Central does. Ring Central is creating is really it, it's a big enterprise company with a lot of regulation, like a state farm. And uh, even I don't know, maybe even more regulation because we uh, uh, double in um, communication field. So we provide messaging, we provide video, and we provide phone services to our customers. And we have tens of thousands of businesses who uh, and hundreds of thousands of businesses who use Ring Central and millions of users. So it's a very big infrastructure, a lot of servers. We provide our services in North America, in Canada, in Europe, in Southeast Asia, and uh, basically around the world in Australia. And um, we started using Kubernetes in Ring Central uh, in 2015. So at very, very early stage when the Kubernetes was just a version 1.1 1 .1 or 1.1 or 1.0. Yeah, and uh, we at, at the time we basically uh, thought how we can do uh, how we can implement a workflow which will help us to drive uh, our development because Ring central has a very long history uh, in software development not again not as long as the state farm not a hundred years but for software companies pretty big uh, and we have a lot of legacy systems and a lot of and very uh, different kinds of approaches across our company. Uh, so we were like starting with waterfall processes, some of agile development, someone tried to adopt uh, DevOps uh, style. So we thought what we can do and we like, basically uh, what we really want and what we really promote in the company is trying to adapt a new technologies as early as possible to see how we work, to see what we can do with them. And basically, when we started to look into Kubernetes in 2015, we started to use it in production in 2016. <laughs> so we had the first production workloads. And at the time, I basically became familiar with WeaveWorks because we tried and we used uh, WeaveWorks uh, controller for uh, networking. So it was, it, it, it was a very difficult time for us uh, to the early stages, but we managed and right now we run uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters in multiple regions. So we have Kubernetes cluster running in our own hardware, which we set up, we, we manage ourselves. We run Kubernetes cluster in Google Cloud and as a part of GKE and uh, in Amazon as part of EKS. Uh, and uh, yeah, so definitely a very, a, a lot of experience with Kubernetes. Uh, made a lot of mistakes and we will, we will make a lot more, but it's, it's a journey for us. Uh, yeah, yeah, so this is, this is how it started in, in, in Ring Central, how it will continue and will plan to uh, yeah. use Kubernetes in, in more and more in our company. 
Yeah, it's great to find a camaraderie and such an early adopter because uh, I think WeWorks uh, started around that time too. So um, we were a small startup and um, we could still say like, but <laughs> we've been <laughs> using Kubernetes in production maybe longer than most people because we really got in there early and um, you know, our Weave cloud product uh, had been on Kubernetes from the start. And um, I'm really glad to know also, because um, a lot of people, um, so I've been at WeaveWorks for a while now. <laughs> I joined uh, like not one of the first employees, but fairly early. And it was really interesting that, um, you know, in the early days, everybody said, oh, yeah, nobody had heard of our company. But when we went to places where people say, oh, we know what we do, it was WeaveNet, right? And as you can see, you know, we've developed on our various projects and, and our GitOps journey. And so it's great to hear that WeaveNet still helped in our kind of validation, right? You were saying they're like, well, okay, I can trust the company that's behind this thing that, that people have been using. So that was really um, gratifying to hear. Um, so yes, okay, so you've been early and now, uh, you know, you're, you, you were saying that like kind of a, a small component right now is on Kubernetes, but you're, you're very committed and you're interested in the next stages, right? Especially with key needs that you have, I think some of them that involve like scaling, right? Yeah, exactly. So a small component is relative term because uh, right now we're running about 200 clusters, Kubernetes clusters, and uh, it's uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of deployments running on them across all regions. Just just the scale of the company, it's in the scale of the company, it's a relatively small because we have our own data centers, uh, which runs like immense amount of workloads and managed by all kinds of solutions so yeah uh, this, but the scaling uh, we, we what we want to do we want to really scale kubernetes to all of our workloads it's meaning we're going to run thousands of ten thousands of clusters and it's most likely will be a quite difficult task especially uh, with uh, such uh, diverse product as we have an essential but uh, it's something we are ready to do, it's something we committed, and we are moving to this direction. And what I want to like maybe uh, make a little bit more like clearer focus is uh, develop, like I said, development practices in Rexantral have different types of development practices. And as one of the, I was already said before, so the GitOps is a mindset. Uh, for me, it's not like a GitOps is a mindset, but it's about a uh, level, maybe a level up higher is a DevOps is a mindset. So what we're trying to adopt and we try and, and trying to be adopting it and started to adopt it back in 2015 as a DevOps as a process as a mindset. So uh, our development practices is, uh, and what I mean by DevOps as a mindset is what it's concentrated around the ownership end to end of the product, the build teams. So it, it does not, it, we don't, we basically do not have uh, try and, trying not aim not to have dedicated DevOps team who prepare infrastructure and manage infrastructure. We're trying to make sure teams, development teams and engineers work closely with uh, engineers who work on infrastructure and we are basically in the same boat and we're maintaining and creating and providing the tools for our teams to and our, to our teams to manage this infrastructure. So this is something we uh, successfully implemented across the company and uh, yeah so how does it works how it is important what, what is important in this regards for us is we um so first of all because the teams and should aim, like because we end owning end-to-end -end infrastructure end-to-end -end, meaning we also responsible not only for development uh, but also for testing for deploying and maintaining my product and here in this this big like big picture and designing it as well yeah so designing creating maintaining testing etc so we're fully responsible and when we're managing given support tickets yeah so if something happens we, we are responsible to maintaining this this, this product so gitops here is helps us very clearly so we adopted the gitops here to make sure we can see it uh, see like basically give the move the developers closer to the maintaining it's it's not as clear and when you're trying to see and trying to to get it uh, at, at the first but when we move to this direction we we uh, basically discovered very clear 
benefit in what developers right now, I will, we have full understanding and clear picture of what deployed in production, what, what is desired state in the production. And we, we also can and, and we can and we do, we maintain our own manifests, we create merge requests, we maintain resources, etc. We are no longer detached from the production and running system. We are now part of the system. So this is, was one of the one of the many benefits GitHub gave us, and uh, right now we're trying to expand it a lot more inside the company. It's exciting, um, yeah. And uh, and in that, you were saying that you know you have some key needs, right? Like um, horizontal scaling, managing dependencies. Uh, you mentioned mono repos a little bit. Can you share a little bit about these um, key needs that um, you? Uh, are kind of uh, what do you call it like required uh, and, and how 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 is GitOps and, and flux helped in this way yeah sure so i big believer first of all i big believer in mono repositories and i big believer in uh atomic updates and state atomic state so what we have in a company and what we're doing everywhere the way we adopt the GitOps pattern or even just devops pattern we have huge mono repositories. This mono repositories allows us to see the whole infrastructure at a glance. So we have every cl multiple clusters, every configuration lives in one repository, repository. And by doing, and it's on two levels. So we have two main, basically two mono repositories, one for code and one for configuration. So it's a GitOps repository and the code repository. So the code repository is also a mono repository, which we, uh using to build and container images and to build the container images we utilize Bizel. Uh, it's a build tool which very powerful build tool uh, developed by google and we're also using uh, nix to create this distro and we created distro images but the main re main thing like main purpose of this uh, code mon repository is to create images nothing else and when we have um GitOps repository which have all the infrastructure described and declaratively, declaratively what is our desired state are for every environment. And uh, because of all we have complicated system and a lot of our company and components are intertwined, interconnected, and we have uh, multiple requirements. So maybe some component can depend on version of another component and it can be very, very complicated in terms of configuration, even secret management as well. So a mono repository and Flux especially uh, helps us to maintain this atomic state. So when we do an update, we know exactly what we can we go to desired state. It will not come from two different sources and we can synchronize this update and see it at glance. At glance. So as uh, we're using a merge request as a change management. So basically in, in every enterprise, almost we have a regulated enterprise, you should have observability and traceability uh, for audit reasons and change management is one of those so we're using a merge request basically equals to change management request so we know everything git helps us really and that was already touched in today talk it helps us to facilitate this change management process uh, in a way it's clear and it's undeniably basically undeniable source of truth so flux is a centerpiece here it it gives us opportunity to implement this kind of workflow without any imperative pipelines or pipelines which do change state in an unpredicted manner. So essentially, essentially what we want to achieve is to have fully Git-centric approach, which fully describe our state. And uh, we want to have this source of truth living in one place, like we can, what we can analyze, what we can work with it. Uh, we can uh, create a tools which can do additional security scanning. And it's very useful, very important for us, and it helps us uh, to manage very big infrastructure. And from the even management perspective, uh, before like before we tried to adopt it, we had multiple like like multiple teams maintaining and delivering system. Like if we had deli we had delivery teams, uh, but with GitOps we do not need a, we do not need a delivery team. Yeah, so we just need to make sure the changes are synchronized and the trust flux to synchronize those changes for us. So we are operating flux from version 1.0 and right now fully transitioned to version 2.0 and uh, not, not, not zero, I mean, <laughs> two point something. Uh, and it's, it's 
proved for us it's worked quite it's working quite well uh there's always hiccups and something but it's, it's early adopters there's always some problems but we are not um interfering with our workflow in uh, uh in a way it does not allow us to do what we want to do yeah uh, and I'd like to emphasize what you mentioned um, a couple times that, right? Um, you know, depending on your industry, just there are regulations. And so um, this process just helps to, um, there's the transparency already in the process that then makes you um, compliant, right? Or at least helps with the compliance for those regulations. Exactly, yes. It's very big, like in, in every big enterprise, in every big company, it's um, very, uh, Hard question. It's not easy to answer. And it's compliance, a lot of different systems and security as well, and part of the security, part of the compliance. And, and Flux makes it so much easier. So it's like a GitOps as a process, and the Flux as a tool which I'll facilitate, allows us to, to implement this process, makes life much easier. It's, yeah. it's, it's just a better tool. I mean, it's with, even if you when we talk with our um, Compliance officers, chief compliance officers, and our auditors, it's just so clear what GitOps allows us to make much more um, like auditable changes, more compliant changes than any, than any other tool. Because before, before we had like change management process, which we need to describe what changes we do, but it was done by human. So when you need, if you want to do something, you need to go and check what human performed exactly stages described and not did something else. And also you need to ask, give access to the human, to the, to the person, yeah, to, to the system, maybe give them fruit access. It, it makes so much, much more difficult to uh, reason about uh, these changes than if you're using GitOps. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and you, you mentioned this, but uh, you know, we have to appreciate that. Um, you know, in the decades that Ring Central has been around, that's technology that you know has to get updated, and not just technology within Ring Central, but the technology within the larger fields, right? So it's really um, impressive to see your commitment and Ring Central's commitment to modernizing always and and leveraging um, the tools that we have uh, in the CNCF and, and elsewhere. So it's a, such an exciting story. Um, so with that, uh, I just wanted to check in if you had other things you wanted to touch base on before we talk a little bit more about um, progressive delivery. Uh, yeah, I think we can talk about progressive delivery and if we will can always circle back, it's like a live conversation. So if, if we have maybe some questions, I can try to answer on live. So we'll see. Yeah. And I'll bookmark a second because I always it's progressive delivery is still a new term. So if it's the first time you're hearing it, um, it's kind of become uh, more and more a used term to reflect things like canary deployments, blue green, uh, AB, it's sort of like people started listing out all of those. And somebody I, I think it was a friend of ours was saying like, well, what about progressive delivery? So that's what we mean when we uh, we share that. So, yeah. So how are you using Flux, Flagger, Istio, exploring this this space? Yeah, so this is very like interesting and uh, important question for me because uh, we so w part of the progressive delivery we we had a lot of talks in this conversation and in this conference about the delivery itself. But uh, for me, like if you like DevOps, you end end to end. You also have this process called quality assurance, and the quality assurance is very comp could be very complicated especially when we started to trying to use this GitOps pipelines, trying to automate it as much as we could, we quickly found out what the quality assurance is a really big part of this process. Yeah, so in terms of, uh, it's, if you do not have robust quality assurance set up in terms of testing and maintaining, you will most likely will hit the wall in terms of uh, how rapidly you can update and what you can do with it. So you will still have to do some manual testing and it will slow it down. So tools uh, like Flagger, which is fantastic tool, it's 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 help. Like I, I just want to say, if you have service mesh set up in your cluster uh, and you do some Kubernetes delivery, just just use Flagger. It's only like even in its basic form, it's only benefits you. So it, it gives you ability, and you can start to you can start using Flagger from where it like j just to check if your container not crash looping and switches it switches traffic for you when you can progressively add additional checks you can use 
it for canary, ana canary analysis you can do at integration and post verification checks it's 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 fantastic so in terms of progressive delivery in is overall um being central using uh like multiple tools uh, and uh, what additional addition like well, not only plugger of course because we try and, i'm a big believer in house engineering as well so and i will try to tell you why yeah for example what the house engineering and, and maybe tools like plugger is important because uh i'm a software engineer software developer in the past and right now i, I still feel like a software engineer and as a software engineer right now we are lazy we are trying to cut corners every way we can and uh if you can force so you you need to create an environment which forces software engineer to adhere to specific practices so how do you do it uh you can try to get around by stay with, behind the engineer and trying to tell him okay you need to write more tests okay this is not covered etc etc but it will most likely we will find a way around it there's always path of least resistance and engineers are smart way know how to navigate here uh, so what we trying to achieve what we're trying to do is to put the engineers in an environment where they cannot just just cannot cut corners so for example chaos chaos engineering you put the engineers in the environment where uh, everything can fail even in production uh, containers can restart systems can fail and we just need to know we need to implement high availability practices we need to think how we're going to recover from the disaster so for for example litmus is a great tool which allows you to tap inside the kubernetes cluster uh, we also need to know what we cannot really uh, have uh, like blocked testing manual regression testing so when we de deploy something in the environment we need to make sure we're part of this deployment because we use flagger and flagger uses to we use flagger to verify the deployment process as a post verification as a secondary analysis will will basically will fail you will not be able to deploy you will not be able to progress your delivery if you do not have like if, if you if your system does not conform to the specific uh, specific uh, policies and uh, specific tests you you, you, you create so um, this is this pipeline allows us so basically yeah so it, it allows us to create the environment for engineers where we need so we just basically need to write tests we need to think about architecture overall architecture of the system how we're going to deploy it how we're going to work with um, changing state updates and progressive delivery and we do it everywhere so we have like it's set up from the lab to to stage to production it's a continuous pipeline and uh, basically yeah so this is one of the most important components when i talk inside the company about flagger and flags and all the stuff i always um uh, basically I, I always think about how does it um not a, really focus focus on flagger so flagger is a great tool you're going to hear a lot more about it today. so thank you so much it's just really gratifying that uh as people might have known at the start of today, um, we Stefan Prodan, who's on our team, who created Flagger. <laughs> That's what Stefan does. Just says, oh, this weekend I started a thing. And then a couple of weeks later, ah, I don't know. It just seemed like something cool to make. And now it's a it's a whole phenomenon and it's in the CNCF. And it's so great to hear you um, really finding use from it. So um, I noticed we are at time, <laughs> so thank you so much for taking the time to sit with us and again uh, to add uh, Ring Central to the adopters page for Flux and Flagger and I'm sure we'll have many more conversations to check in again on your fantastic GitOps uh, journey. So thank you. Feel free to you. ask questions in the Slack. I will try to answer all of them. Absolutely. Yes. Great thank reminder. You. So we'll be monitoring the um, GitOps Day Slack uh, for days and maybe weeks to come because, uh, uh, you know, people can watch at their own time. So we'll make sure that we ping Yvonne uh, if there are any questions. So thank you. And thanks for watching thank us today. Thank thanks. You.